Hey traders, Roggy here, and this is your free video for Friday, January 26th. We're taking a look at where our focus needs to continue to be as we tackle this month of January going into February. We do have the uh, meeting coming up, but there's no, even though we're in that wonderful blackout period where we're not going to hear from the FOMC chuckleheads, uh, we are not expecting any significant changes in rates, but the rate statement and the press conference could have massive implications for adjusting whether or not we actually do see a rate cut in March rather than in May and June. All right, that's those are things we'll talk about, you know, next week in charts and coffee and top tier outlook, all that good stuff. But what about right now? How do we set ourselves up for next week? Well, it's going to be more of the same. So I'm going to show you what we've done in the rooms. But the reason I'm keeping the view right here, this is the first step of, and we've done sessions like this before in our free video of trade this, right? Not that, which just reminds us what we trade is more important than how we trade it where we focus on being bullish, where we focus on being bearish matters. Our watch list for upside has to be different than our watch list for downside, right? So we've been sticking to the long side of the market because if we have a dovish pivot, as it looks like is gonna happen, that's our macroeconomic map, makes sense to think about long positions. Four main places, semiconductors, communications, tech, and financials, right? So let's walk through what we've been doing and, and where, like I said, I want to be doing more of the same. All right, first of all, the two strongest indices continue to be the S&P and the NASDAQ. And if we take a look at the structure, now what is structure? It's really three things, right? I talk a lot about structure from the standpoint of these two colors at the bottom of my screen. And that is the top row of momentum, the bottom row of trend. Right. But even more important is the combination of three things in order of importance, sentiment. Am I generally speaking bullish or bearish? Are we above the equator? And you'll take a look here. This is the equator right here, right above the equator. My sentiment is bullish. Then comes trend in order of importance, important sentiment and trend. The trend has been largely going back and forth in the NASDAQ to neutral to bullish, neutral to bullish. The reason we want the history of this is because the trend that preceded the chop is important because we want to optimize, we want to skew towards continuation. Big mistake a lot of traders make is they presume reversal. That's cost traders dearly for the past 12 months expectations are after a retracement rather than getting bearish as so many traders have done we want to stay bullish and we want to take advantage of continuation not the assumption often incorrectly of reversal so let's stick with what's been working all right so what have we been trading okay rog that sounds great you gave me a three minute idea of where i need to look what have you been doing open trades bank of america to the long side why XLF continues to be strong, S&P continues to be strong, and so we don't hate our money. We want to focus on the long side, but it's a neutral environment, Rog. But yes, it was bullish, and we're still in the bullish hemisphere. Sentiment is still bullish, right? Don't worry about momentum. Momentum is twitchy. Momentum is sort of this uh, most twitchy element. It's important to look at, but not as much as sentiment and trend. And that means that as we might have some bearish momentum, it feeds into the support within the context of a neutral trend in the bullish hemisphere. Start thinking in these three pieces and you'll see why we're long Bank of America from the daily price movement range. Notice I'm not just automating sentiment, momentum, and trend. I'm automating the zone from which I buy as well. It's this nice highlighted zone right on the chart. No guesswork, right? We still have our long position in JP Morgan. Again, more emphasis on financials. They continue to outperform. As long as we wait for the pullback, we buy in the daily price movement range. We focus on being in the bullish hemisphere, bullish sentiment. JP Morgan continues to outperform. The other trade we put on this week was Disney, right? Same idea. It might be a neutral trend, but it's in the bullish hemisphere. Look how valuable being above that 200 
really is. And here we have the dip into the daily price movement range and bullish momentum. That works for me. But being that we're in the bullish hemisphere and we have a neutral environment, use that daily price movement range. It's going to continue to work. Uh, one of the most recent trades we put on were twofold. One was in regional banks. Regional banks have been able to climb above 200 in the bullish hemisphere since last November. So we want to buy dips into the daily price movement range. And ultimately, uh, that's probably going to start to exhaust a bit. So we're going to have to wait for this to refire because we're nearly overbought on the slow stow. So we're going to take advantage of a little bit more upside. We've already paid ourselves here. And now we'll wait for the next opportunity in the gray zone. Uh, the other one was Freeport MacMoran. So not just indices. Uh, Freeport MacMoran has been a pretty good performer in terms of uh, XLB in the bullish hemisphere, oversold stochastic, bouncing out of the daily price movement range, right? Just follow the sequence, make it as objective as possible. And this is what we've been what we've been doing. You know, notice no earnings trades here. We're not taking advantage of the binary volatility event of guessing at which way earnings are going to be. Uh, but what we did do this last week was play Intel's rally into earnings. And we'll wrap it up with this right here. This was a long position that we put on in the sector secrets mastery. And the idea was let's not be in the trade when earnings come out. Let's take advantage of the movement higher into earnings. And that's exactly what we did. We exit before the volatility, let the chaos ensue. We're not going to be in the mosh pit. We'll see what the next setup might be for Intel. But think about that window of opportunity before earnings, about two to four weeks out. And it's going to be a far better, highly probable scenario because the psychology leading into earnings oftentimes is going to be very useful rather than guessing at which way. Even good earnings, right? Intel had good earnings and take a look. Sell, you know, selling off to 44. All right. Hope that helps. I'll see you in the next update. Thanks as always for smashing the like button. See you in charts and coffee Monday through Friday. Top tier outlook right here at the Simpler Trading YouTube channel or my YouTube channel 6 p.m. on Sunday, Eastern time. Until then, gang, be good to each other. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.